Good morning. Uh, please stand as you are able for the call to worship. Come before our God in praise, for God is working great things. We are challenged, and in Christ we find direction. We are called, and in Christ we find the courage to follow. We are at times overwhelmed by life, but in Christ we find comfort. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for our God is good, with a steadfast love that endures forever. Our opening hymn is number 62 in the United Methodist hymnal, All Creatures of Our God and King. And Pastor Ben said we could sing all seven verses today. Seven verses? <laughs> in honor of my 95-year-old mother, who was the text editor of this very hymnal back when it was invented. And this is a beautiful hymn. Okay. <laughs>
verses? She said seven verses. All seven verses. Uh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, there's spine print for six and seven. Let's continue. Two more verses. <laughs>
Where's my Ellie? Nope, she, Grandma forgot to let her out. Yeah, forgot to let her out. Let's go, girl! There's my Ellie. Four and she's got a possum with a bow. All right, that is awesome. She always has some great stuff. Yeah, exactly. Look at you. All right. So the kids and I have been painting rocks. So if you look in the planners out front, there's a few out there. We just keep adding to the pile. So feel free if you want to take them. They usually paint one and then take one. Like, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So feel free. Um, how many of you guys have like seen these out and about? Yeah. For a couple friends of mine like they have they have a, live in a corner house, so they'll go out in their front yard and somebody has deposited some in their front yards and stuff. I've seen schools that have done like full pathways like the entire school did rocks and so they have full pathways with the rocks and stuff which is really cool so just you know knowing that we're thinking of you and that we're saying a little prayer with you and stuff so um we're all back in school now ellie went back right it's hot out there though you guys man it's hot out there so um gracie's got a new principal Roman, right? No? New teacher. You've got a new teacher. And new school? Yeah? No? Oh, she's got a substitute. Sorry. Barb DeWitt, Renee, we're there, right? We know what those substitute teachers are like. We're just trouble, right? So, yeah, and, yeah, Roman's got a new teacher. They got a new principal this year. All the changes all the changes besides changing grades so it's a little little daunting so but they're doing great we're so proud of them so you guys notice grace and roman are in the place did you see how awesome they did they did so good today so proud of them so, yeah so now i think get back here early to church every sunday right is that the deal kim see if you can get here early right every sunday night <laughs> oh i got it oh. Yeah, oh yeah, so we, I'll just pick up Gracie on the way. It'll be fun. I'll pick Gracie on the way. All right. Can we say a prayer? Anybody want to say a prayer this morning? Oh, you're in the headlights. Nope. All right. Dear Lord, thank you for these children. Thank you for their enthusiasm. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your love, your compassion, and your wisdom to teach us that you are the path. You are our way to heaven. Take care of them, give them safe, and love them as much as we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, friends, let's go.
Let me know if you have trouble hearing. Uh, we've been a I've been asked to uh, let my face show, so maybe it will help some people uh, understand a little bit better. So uh, we have uh, um, our time of prayer, uh, and we begin with a showing uh, with a sharing of um, Joyce concerns. Uh, do we have any? I know that Winston uh, continues to be a concern. Uh, no longer on a ventilator, but still um, uh, in intensive care, in part because there aren't other rooms, but also I think they want to keep a close eye on him as well. And so we continue to lift him in prayers. Yeah, Bonnie. I'm Yes, it is that time that that is the uh, uh, these days, isn't it? Uh, looking up our, our country in prayer uh, with the uh, hurricanes, the fires, but then also the uh, service of the women uh, who were lost in Afghanistan and all of the, the people there as well. So our country and the world uh, that they would be peace. Yes. So thank you, Mom. Others, yes. You're pointing. Tell me about your pointing. What? Good to have you back. Yes. How are your eyes doing? Very well. And she has a birthday tomorrow. Okay. So you're here telling me about her. Yeah. Tell me about her. Good. 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 Thank you. Yes. I'd like to. Prayers for your brother there. Yeah. I'm certainly that to use that. All right. Um, I'm sure that, uh, that we have lots of joys as well. Uh, and we give thanks to the Lord, uh, even as we lift our, our nation and our world. Uh, and friends and neighbors before the platform. Uh, please remain seated as we share in our song of prayer. It's Are Ye Able? Uh, verses 1, 2, and 4. Uh, and you'll find that on page 530 in your hymnals. Uh, Are Ye Able? You remain seated so that if you'd like to be in silent prayer at this time, uh, we will pray this time. Thank you.
Gracious God, we come before you giving you thanks, praising your holy name, remembering, Lord, that you are God, creator of heaven and earth. All that is, is not only the work of your hands, but your possession, that we truly are yours. Help us, Lord, to live like it. Help us remember each and every day that, that we owe our, our life to you. Help us, Lord, guide us that we truly might use all that we are to your glory and give you thanks in all things. Lord, we see trouble around the world, and we know that you are present, we pray, that you would surround those who are in danger's way and uh, storms and fires. Lord, we lift up the emergency personnel that are risking their lives all around the world. And Lord, we pray especially for those who are facing such dangerous situations. Lord, we lift up our service men and women and we pray that as many as possible will be rescued. Lord, we give you thanks for those that, that uh, are working so hard and that, that so many have been. Lord, we know there is more before us. And so Lord, we pray that you will guide our country that we truly might step up to the challenge. Lord, we uh, lift our church. We pray, Lord, that you would surround us, that you would uh, open us to your to your spirit and, and open our eyes to how you would how you would move amongst this community. Lord, use us, we pray, to share your good news, the good news of your love and the strength of your spirit. Lord, we lift up those in our church who are facing surgeries. Uh, Lord, we lift up those who are who are struggling with health concerns. Uh, Lord, we uh, we pray that your healing would be upon them. We lift up uh, brothers and sisters and, and fathers and mothers who stand in special need of of your healing touch. Lord, we pray that that would uh, that that would come, and that in all things that we would give give you thanks for we go that ultimately we are in your hands. Lord, we pray that, that we would give ourselves fully, that you would open our eyes to see you more clearly, and that we would, we would follow you in all things. We ask these in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Continue our worship this morning as we dedicate our tithes and offerings to God.
Please rise for our doxology.
events. Our first scripture lesson is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 to 12. Finally, be strong in God and God's mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate, place of, uh, bre breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all God's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. The Gospel lesson is from the book of Mark, chapter 7, verses 1 to 8 and 14 to 15. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw that some of his disciples were eating food with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law ask Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? Jesus replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. Again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. Thus ends the lesson. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We pray, Lord, that uh, your grace would fill our lives, that we would be open to you, and that we truly might draw from you, so that we might know your strength. In the name of our Savior, amen. 
Let's call it that. There was a, a Sunday school teacher uh, who had been uh, teaching all about faith. Uh, and uh, she, she was sort of summing up uh, several weeks of lesson. Uh, and she said, uh, what does it take uh, to get into heaven? If I give lots of money, will that get me into heaven? And the kids all said, no, that's not the most important thing. And she said, if, uh, if, I, if I go out and, uh, and um, uh, you know, do this or that, and the kids all said, no, no, that's not the most important thing. She said, what is the most important thing? Just very proud that her kids had learned all about death. I mean, all about, oh, I, I gave away my punchline. All about, uh, all about faith. And uh, she said, what's the most important thing? And all the kids together said, you have to be dead first before you can get into heaven. So yeah, I, I'm sure that one's not a true story. <laughs> and I hope the next one isn't as well. Uh, it was about a, a man, a, a Methodist, who went up to heaven. Uh, and uh, as there was the pearly gates, and there was, uh, there was Peter there. And uh, he uh, had the, uh, the first person come up and looked him in the eye and said, you know, what does it take to get into heaven? The guy gave an answer. Peter said, Peter said, no, I'm sorry, that's not he right. He pulled on a great lever, and the man went, woof, down into, down into hell. And uh, so the next one, well, like I said, I hope this one isn't right. Uh, and then the next person came up, you know, and what is, uh, you know, and he gave some answer, nope, not right, woof, put him down into hell. And, uh, and so the Methodist showed up. And, uh, you know, he, he knew his Sunday school lesson. And uh, the uh, St. Peter said, you know, what does it take to go through these pearly gates? And he said, well, salvation uh, by grace through faith. And St. Peter said, oh, that's right. As he got ready to open up the pearly gates, the Methodist said, but on the other hand, whoosh, down he went. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't take some doctor to get us in through those gates, you know, because if, if so, I'm sure we're all in trouble. Um, and, uh, and so today's, uh, uh, today's passage is about, about doctrines and about, uh, and about maybe even salvation. Uh, that the Pharisees had taken the laws of the Old Testament and had laid tradition on top of it. And then they turned around and judged people by not following the tradition, not the Old Testament laws as much as the tradition. This, this washing didn't mean to get your, your, your cups clean, uh, washing the food or the cups. It meant going through a certain ritual, a ceremonial washing. And, uh, and so they come to Jesus and say, how can your disciples you know, don't do the right ceremonial washings? And, uh, and, and Jesus' response is to be critical of their whole system of setting up these doctrines and then expecting people to follow them and judging them if they don't. Now part of the problem was you sort of had to be wealthy to be a Pharisee because you couldn't do all the rituals and everything and go out and have a job. You know, it was a full-time job to, uh, to do all the, uh, all the rituals and all the doctrines and keep it all, uh, keep it all in line. And, uh, and so it left out the vast majority of the, of the Jewish people. Uh, the Jewish people had a, a system of salvation where they, they uh, did sacrificing, uh, that a great sacrifice was done that was supposed to like take care of anything they, uh, uh, they, uh, they missed, you know, in the Day of Atonement. Uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was a system that was very um, centered uh, on uh, on, on, on what they did and, uh, and, and the doctrines that they did and, and everybody else they thought was, was, was going to hell. They said a, a Gentile that was a saint that was a Gentile, somebody who's non-Jewish, is only fit to be uh, the fuel for the fires of hell. You know, that was, that was, that was their understanding. It was their, uh, their belief and how often uh, Christians fall into that same problem. Of, uh, of being of being very um, very judgmental, uh, we are uh, uh, we are called on uh, to to live. You know, Jesus Christ, and, and what did He do? He gave His life uh, for for all for all the world. Uh, the the disciples uh, are challenged for not 
following the rules of the Pharisees, and Jesus instead points them to the, to the scriptures, uh, their Old Testament scriptures, uh, and, and says you have to stop letting these traditions get in the way of, of following the scriptures. And, uh, and so that is, um, uh, you know, that the, there is uh, the, the teaching that, that we have to be careful to not let our doctrines divide us and get in the way. Uh, the story, and I'm not sure how apocryphal it is, uh, of, of the, the Protestant Reformation. Uh, you know, the, uh, Martin Luther is a figure we remember. Some of us also know uh, John Calvin. Uh, some of our churches uh, followed out from John Calvin, others from Martin Luther, others from uh, what went on in, in Great Britain at the time, and those, that's our roots. Uh, however, John Wesley was a big fan of Martin Luther, went to, to, Ger to Germany to uh, study a little bit about it. That's, uh, that's probably where a lot of our, uh, um, our, our understanding of, of the sacred comes from, uh, out of that, that train of thought. Uh, uh, Martin Luther was a, 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 um, a, a, a Catholic uh, priest um, uh, who, who very much hung on to a lot of uh, his Roman Catholic upbringing. Uh, and one of them was, uh, was the understanding of the, the sacraments. Uh, the, the Roman Catholic Church believes in transubstantiation, that, that in communion, the, the bread and the wine, for them it's always wine, uh, is um, uh, changed into the body and blood of Christ. Uh, and, and, and the official answer for, for why, why it still looks like uh, wine and bread is that it's an accident. That's the official answer. Uh, that that it's, it's, it is an accident that it still looks like bread and wine because it has been changed. And they truly believe uh, that uh, the, the, it is the, the, um, the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus. Uh, the reason if you're a lay person you don't uh, share in the cup, it's not that they feel like lay people aren't good enough. It's that you don't want to spill a drop. And that, in fact, they think the bread, and this happened early in the early church, long before the, the Reformation, that, uh, that, that if you were, uh, if you took just the bread, it was enough. It came out of a history of people gathering in churches uh, when, uh, when they were being attacked by, uh, by, by hordes of people. And uh, the question was, if someone only gets just the bread, is that enough? If you are, is that, is, that, is, that, is that the full thing? And the answer is yes. You know, that, that even if you don't, don't have time to have the whole worship service and you can get the bread, and that's, that's, that's the answer. <laughs> that, that was the early church's answer uh, in, in the face of some of the invasions that went on uh, in, the, in the 400s. And, and, so, and, and so for the, the, the Roman Catholic Church, to, to spill a drop of that juice would be to do some terrible, have some terrible curse put upon you. That's why you don't do it. So you, you let the priest do it, you know, and then he takes the risk. <laughs> and, and, you know, and he says Hail Mary's for, you know, 10,000 times to make up for it, but drop in some ground. You know, and, and, it's, and so that's, uh, you know, that's the, that's the history behind it. Uh, and, and so that is the ritual. And, and when the Protestant church separated, from the Church of England, it was mostly over uh, uh, having to pay money to be to be saved, um, having uh, you know some of the rules that were these traditions, traditions that had been built up that uh, that had taken the place the Protestants thought we thought too much. Away after after the the Protestant Reformation, the, there was Reformation within the Catholic Church as well. Uh, but when the Protestants got together. Uh, they were trying to form one church, not, not many churches like what we have. Uh, and the, the point of division, and again, I'm not sure about the historicity, how apocryphal the story is, uh, but the story goes that, uh, uh, that they had, had, were, were torn over communion. I mean, does it change? The Lutherans believe in something called transubstantiation, which means it has both the body and the blood and the and, and, and the characteristic of, of, of bread and cup. So you think it all happens together. Like the two things are happening at the same time. So it's pretty close to the Catholic position. And Martin Luther wouldn't take anything else. I mean, it was very important to him. 
Uh, and the story is that he, that he took his knife and carved in the table in front of him the words, this is my body. And I'm sure there's thousands of those tables around everybody claiming it's the real thing. But, but, but you know, that's the, that's the story behind this, that, 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 that it was that idea of what communion is that separated us, that we couldn't be together because we couldn't agree on, on, uh, on that, and, and you know, just let <laughs> people have their own belief. You know, we couldn't do it. You know, in, 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 the, in the Methodist Church, we, we, we have what's called the quadrilateral. And so instead of having a list of doctrines you have to believe, uh, we have uh, the, the belief that each person, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and that's a very important part, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, um, yeah, looking at scripture, tradition, reason, and experience, uh, together can come to the right doctrine and the right belief and the right way of living from scripture, tradition, reason, and experience. So you don't need a list of do's and don'ts. That if you if you come, you know, to, to any any situation, any problem, uh, and use those, then we might come to different places. And that's and that's recognized. That, that one person might believe one thing and another person another. But, but under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, if we're willing to, to, uh, to try to, uh, to, to, we don't need a ritual to get it all right. We don't need, you know, a, a doctrine that's somehow going to lay, uh, lay it all out for us. Uh, that we can come to the Lord and, uh, and, and through our own guidance of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, Spirit that guides, guides us each differently. We are called on uh, by Jesus to not let the rituals get in the way. And, that's, and this is the, the part of it. Part of what was happening was that in order for Judaism to survive throughout the centuries, with all of the times they were taken over and oppressed and, uh, and, and exiled, all the different things that happened, uh, was to keep themselves separate. So this idea about uh, the difference between Jew and Gentile was very important to, to some of them because that was what had maintained Judaism throughout the centuries. You know, all those other people, you know, they've disappeared. You know, you don't, you don't have, you know, a lot of people, you know, who worship Baal anymore. You know, and, and it's gone. You know, and, and, and some of them was because the, the Jews were able to keep themselves separate. And part of that meant you didn't have anything to do or as little as possible with people who weren't Jewish. If you went into somebody else's house who wasn't Jewish, you went through a, a week-long purification uh, process. If, if somebody who wasn't Jewish came into your house, you went, the, the house had to be purified over a very long process. It was very hard to have friends that weren't Jewish because of the rules, and that was intentional. The intention was to make sure that the, the, the people of Judaism uh, could, could, be, could be, maintain their separateness. Uh, and so these rituals of purity uh, were not anything about trying to get your hands clean. You know, you had to wash your hands down here, and then you had to wash your hands down here. And it said you had to use so much water that it ran down your arms and fell off your elbows. You know, and so you had to have big baths of water. Now we're talking about an area that was very much like ours. Big baths of water at your door just to do the ritual washing. And, uh, and if you had people that, that weren't Jewish, you wouldn't have done a home that wasn't Jewish, you wouldn't have the big baths of water to, to do the ritual. It was, uh, it was uh, these rituals uh, were there to maintain a separation. And what happened, was that, uh, in, in the, particularly in, in the resurrection, but in the teachings of Jesus, um, we who are Christian came to understand that the love of God is, uh, is, is for all the world, and that in fact we shouldn't be maintaining uh, a separation like that. Uh, and, uh, and it continues, it continues to this day. Cultural separation is something that is, a, that is an issue in, in many of our churches. Uh, I think the, the biggest separation for, for us in our churches nowadays, Methodist churches, is age, is an age separation. Uh, you know, that, that somehow 
you know, people who like one kind of music can't worship with people that like another kind of music because they're younger and they're older, and it, 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 it's, it, it, it's unfortunate that we allow ourselves to be separated like that. Uh, back when I was first starting in, in the ministry, before, just before I came in, uh, there was a, a man named Bishop Golden. Bishop Kennedy had been the bishop for years and years. Uh, our churches, uh, our church merged uh, in, in 68 with, uh, with the black uh, churches. Uh, we had been separate before that. You can believe before 68, we were, uh, the, the, we were, we were, um, had them in a, in a separate conference, uh, even though we worshiped in the same town. Uh, but, but fortunately, we came to our senses. And uh, at first, well, one of the bishops from the, from the black church was Bishop Golden. And he followed Bishop Kennedy, who had been, you know, bishop for years and years and years, and had many traditions. And Bishop Golden came in, and it was sort of like, ah, because the, the apple cart was upset. And, uh, and so, so he started to appoint ministers to churches, and there was interracial appointment, and people were all upset with that. And there was age, and there was some age uh, uh, separation as well. The, uh, it, it was sort of a pattern or a, a system where older pastors would get appointed to larger churches, and, and if you were in a large church, you had a minister that fit into a certain mold. And, uh, and, and, and so Bishop Golden broke the mold and started sending some young pastors, not only you know black and, and you know brown and whatever, but young pastors going to churches. And one of them was went to a very long one of our very large churches. Uh, it was uh, one of those very high steeple churches with a long set of steps in the front of it. And, uh, and, and so on his first day, he was this young guy, you know, he had maybe just a couple of churches out of seminary. And, uh, and, and so he went there and he decided he would greet everybody that came up the steps. So he stood at the top of the steps and there was an elderly woman who came up on a cane and he walked down the steps and helped, helped her up. And she said, oh, I'm so excited to uh, be at church today because we have a new minister and we have no idea what he's like. And he, he held her and he, he took her arm and they went up to the top of the steps. She talked about how excited she was to meet this new minister. They got to the top of the steps and he said, well, I'm happy to tell you that I am the new minister of the church. We heard this story at the, at the retirement service. He, he shared this story with us. And she, he said she looked at him and looked him up and down and said, well, that's nice, Sonny. Now, would you help me back down the steps? And <laughs> he walked her back down the steps, and she walked away, <laughs> never to come back. <laughs> and she looked at this young guy and thought, oh, my goodness, the Methodist church has gone crazy. You know, sending this young guy to our, to our very established church. And, and, and you know, that's sort of, it, it, it's sort of still here. We find ourselves divided by, by age, by, by things that shouldn't matter. We should be paying attention to Jesus Christ. We should be paying attention to the love that God has for all people. We should be opening our arms and our hearts to everybody, no matter what color, what age. Nothing should separate us as, as brothers and sisters. We are, we are called on to, to open our hearts as Christ opened his heart and, and sharing the good news and, and the ritual uh, should, should get in the way. Uh, and I'd like to close with, uh, with a story. Um, oh, before I do that, we, we're finishing up Ephesians, right? This was the last uh, Sunday of Ephesians. And uh, maybe uh, Paul had some of this you know, the same, he was, uh, he was in Rome. Uh, and we heard about this, uh, the armor of Christ, taking on the armor of Christ. But not just the armor, taking on the full armor. You know, all of these different, you know, the breastplate of righteousness, and, uh, uh, and all of these you know, the, the images that come actually out of the Old Testament, but also come from his, uh, where he was, he was in Rome. He was chained to a centurion, he wasn't actually in prison. Uh, centurion, he was chained, and he says that he's a prisoner in chains. He means literally in chains, but also in chains being, uh, being uh, dedicated to, to Jesus Christ. The, we need to be dedicated to Jesus Christ. And so this is that final little bit of these Ephesians we've been watching, this letter 
that, that, that he writes from prison, encouraging us to stand against all evil. You see, what Jesus was talking about was that we're not saved uh, by ritual, we are saved by grace. And our response to grace should not be ritual. Our response to grace should be living a moral life and, uh, and, and, and uh, looking out for each other and loving each other, being together in the, in the power of the Spirit. Uh, that's what we are called on called on to do indeed. Uh, and, and so my final story: we were watching uh, 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 James Corden uh, doing carpool karaoke, uh, and uh, he had uh, Paul McCartney with him. Uh, and uh, so the, the idea is that he rides in a car that's got all these cameras, uh, and then while they're driving, and in this case driving around London. Uh, um, uh, there, he sits with the, the musician or actor, uh, and they, they talk together. I guess it's always a musician because they sing songs uh, in the car. So Paul, Paul McCartney was there. Uh, and uh, he talked about the song, the, the song Let It Be. Talked about how he, he wrote the song, Let It Be. You know, it starts out about uh, Mother Mary. You know, if it's not, he said it's not, not religious. If you want it to be religious, it can be, but that wasn't the intention. That it's a story of when he was so overwhelmed by what was going on in the world back in, uh, in the mid-60s. Um, you remember the, the, the song Blackbird Singing in the Dead of Night. It's about a, a black woman singing in the face of the, uh, of the disaster of the oppression that was the civil rights movement and the, and the violence that was going on. Uh, and he said some of that just overwhelmed him in the Vietnam War. He was overwhelmed by all of this. And he had a dream of his mother coming to him. His mother's name was Mary. And uh, she had died when he was 14. And so in this dream, she comes to him and comforts him and says, let it be. And so that's where that, that's where that song comes from, if you're a, if you're a Beatles fan. And um, I don't want to say, let me tell you. But I would like to share the words with you. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And when the broken-hearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer let it be. For though they may be parted, there is still a chance that they will see. There will be an answer. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Yeah, let it be. Uh, whisper words of wisdom. Let it be. And when the night is cloudy, there is still a light that shines on me. Shine until tomorrow. Let it be. I wake up to the sound of music. Mother Mary comes to me. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be. The night is cloudy, and a lot of what we face uh, seems to be the darkness of a world out of control. <laughs> it was out of control then and out of control before. And yet still there is an answer. We need to join together and share in the answer. Not create division, but instead be one together in the power of the Spirit as we follow our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Sorry, I guess I preached out a little bit too long. My apologies. But fortunately, the last song is short. Number 671, Lord dismiss us with your blessing. Uh, please stand, 671, let us sing together.
to love each other in all that you need. Be looking not for what is wrong with the world, but what is right. And share in the love of Jesus Christ. Amen.